the forgotten war that shaped America. King Philip's War Explained. This is a strange, wild, and surprisingly important story that shaped the world you live in, whether you knew it or not. We're uncovering the story of a war that most people have never heard of, one that had a devastating impact on early America, King Philip's War. Now you might be thinking, King Philip? Well, wasn't that the guy with the horses and the Romans? Well, not exactly. The King Philip we're talking about wasn't European, and he didn't ride around in shining armor. In fact, his real name wasn't even Philip. It was Metacom, a Native American leader who lived in what we now call New England. And the war that bears his name, or a name that really wasn't his, we'll get into that name thing later, King Philip's war changed everything. Setting the stage. Let's set the scene. It's the mid 1600s. English settlers are popping up all over New England like mushrooms after a rainstorm, taking up land, converting the local Wampanoag people to Christianity, and big surprise, disregarding treaties due to ignorance and on occasion, and more despicably, whenever it suits them. And there had been peace for a while under Metacom's father, Massasoit, but that peace was strained. And tensions? Oh yeah, they were high. Who was King Philip? So, who was King Philip, or Metacom? To honor his father's desire to keep peace with settlers, Metacom took the name Philip. Well, after his father and brother died, Metacom became the sachem, or chief, of the Wampanoag tribe. So, to the settlers, he became King Philip. And boy, did he inherit a mess from his father. European colonists were steadily encroaching on Wampanoag land and culture, creating guns and alcohol for furs, but also tricking the natives into terrible land deals. There's only so much of this you can take before someone says, enough. The spark. Enough for Medicom came when the colonists seriously overstepped and created just one more spark. The spark that lit this powder keg? It was a murder trial, where the accused killers were found guilty and hung, according to the law. The problem was that the three that were executed were Wampanoag men, accused of killing a Christianized Wampanoag on Wampanoag land, and the white European Christian pilgrims did this without consulting the tribe. Today, that would be like the United States arresting three Canadian citizens. Sorry, Canada. Trying them for murdering another Canadian in Canada and then executing them. And all of this without any input from the Canadians. The U.S. would be in big trouble. A serious international incident. So you can understand why this to Medicom was the breaking point. By 1675, King Philip had rallied several Native American tribes and launched a series of attacks on English settlements. The colonists were caught completely off guard. A war of survival. Now, this wasn't just a war. It became a veritable fight for survival on both sides of the conflict. Metacom and his allies were trying to protect their land, culture, and very existence. The conflict spread like wildfire through New England, with native forces burning villages and killing settlers. And the colonists, trying to stay alive, were retaliating with equal brutality. Casualties on both sides were horrendous. To give you an idea of how bad it was, proportionally speaking, King Philip's War was the deadliest conflict in American history. About 10% of the male population of New England died. That's right, 10%. Entire towns were wiped off the map, and the native population decimated. We're talking a near total destruction for the tribes involved. The tide turns. 
By 1676, however, the war started turning against the Native Americans. They were running out of supplies, food, and allies. The English, with their never-ending shipments from across the Atlantic, were in a much better position. The colonists, under leaders like Benjamin Church, adapted guerrilla tactics to match the natives. In August 1676, King Philip himself was hunted down and killed. His head placed on a spike in Plymouth, where it stayed for 25 years. Talk about a grisly victory trophy. The aftermath. So, what happened after this war? Well, the Wampanoag and their allies were decimated, enslaved, displaced, or killed. Entire communities were wiped out, and their culture was forever changed. Meanwhile, the English colonists expanded further into native lands, now virtually unopposed. The war's brutal legacy? It set the stage for centuries of strained and even violent relations and mistrust between Native Americans and European settlers. In this tragic tale, there is at least an ounce or two, or maybe more, of wisdom to be found. But for now, let's focus on just this one. King Philip's War is painful, but it is also a nearly four century distant incident in history. This war is a poignant warning about the consequences of greed, mistrust, and broken promises, which is exquisitely relevant today. When cultures clash, when empathy gives way to entitlement, destruction often follows. We see it in wars, politics, and even in our day-to-day -day lives. So next time you walk through a New England town or see a colonial reenactor, remember the story of King Philip's War, a time of loss, survival, and lessons we're still learning today. So here's the outs. This tragic war shows us that cooperation, communication, and respecting the humanity in others are not just nice ideas. They're essential for survival. And that's it. An ounce submitted for your consideration. Well, thanks for watching. Hope you found this story about King Philip's War interesting. And if you did, especially since you made it this far, why don't you go ahead and give us a like, a subscribe, and share this with your friends. We'd like to get the internet's attention and the best way to do that is to have you gives us <laughs> is to have you give us likes and subscribes so that we can get the attention of the algorithms and be shared even more. <laughs>